Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about discrete and continuous random variables, the introduction to chapter 6, and then section 6.1. So most of the work will be discrete random variables, and those are random variables that have like gaps between the number of outcomes. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And continuous do not. So in this example, they flipped a coin three times. The random variable is the number of heads. So you can see the random variable can take on the value 0, 1, 2, or 3. This is a discrete random variable because there's gaps between 0, 1, and 2, and 3. You can't have 0.6 heads, 1.2 heads. So they've created a probability distribution, which just shows the outcomes and the probability. Remember from last unit, we could check to see if this is valid. Do the probabilities add up to 1? Are the probabilities all between 0 and 1? They are. I could do a histogram of this probability distribution and start talking about like the variability, the shape, the center, things like that. And I could start to answer some simple probability questions, like what's the probability that you get two or more heads out of three flips? Well, it's four out of eight, and some simple things like that. So a random number, or I'm sorry, a random variable is just, it takes on numerical values that describe some chance process. So here was the number of heads when you flip a coin three times. It could be the number of twos that you roll when you roll a dice five times. So this is discrete random variables. We'll talk about continuous later on. So discrete random variables. As I said, there's a gap between the outcomes. So how many AP classes are you taking? Zero, one, two, three, four. You can't take 1.2 AP classes. How many siblings do you have? These are examples of discrete random variables. So every baby takes this APGAR test when they're first born, and a specific value equates to a specific thing. You can read it to get the details, but you have the corresponding probabilities. You can't score like a 0.5, a 1.2. It's just an integer score, a whole number score. So this is a discrete random variable. And it just asks you like make a histogram, describe what you see. So this is talking about center shape and variability. So if the peak is at 9, it's unimodal, it's skewed to the left. You could figure out the specific mean and standard deviation. We're going to get into that. And then you could calculate a pretty simple probability. In this case, probably they have a score of 7 or higher. I'm just summing up those probabilities to get about 91%. Just a reminder, you can try exercise 5. It's very similar to this. It's meant to be there for a reason. So let's look at this, check your understanding. So take a minute, pause the video. All right, I'm going to go over this question right now. Say in words what the meaning of this is. The probability x is greater than or equal to 3. Well, x represents the student's score, with an a being a 4. So this is the probability that a student scored a b or higher. And that probability would be the sum of these two, which is 0.68. All right, part 2. Write the event probability got worse than a C. Worse than a C, well, this is A, B, C. So it would be the probability that X is less than 2, or you could write it as X is less than or equal to 1. And the probability would be 0.12. And then sketching the probability distribution, make sure you label its histogram. You're going to have probability on the vertical axis, an X, or their grade, um, point how many grade points they earn out of the four on the horizontal axis and just taking those probabilities because then you want to start talking about oh describe what you see so we're talking about center shape variability so i can see skew to the left peak that three so just some information on that so we're going to get into how do you calculate the mean that's a measure of center of a discrete random variable. So if you have a probability distribution, I can't just add the numbers and divide by two in this case because they're not equally weighted. So I'm gonna take the value times its probability to figure out my weighted average, which gives me what's called the expected value of that random variable. So here's the formula, mu sub x, the expected value of some random variable x. This is summation. X sub i just represents each individual value. 
times its probability. So in our scenario here, you lose a dollar 20 out of 38 times and you win a dollar 18 out of 38 times. So over the long run, you're going to lose five cents for every dollar that you bet. And this is just an example of why every casino game is favored towards the house and people lose money there in the long run. So this is just going back to the APGAR scores, same idea. It's pretty comprehensive as far as multiplying it out, but keep in mind your value is typically going to be a non-integer value. It's not something that can actually occur. Baby can't receive an APGAR score of 8.128 but do not round your value. So, moving on. So what about a standard deviation? Well, we hopefully you remember standard deviation just means the typical deviation from the mean or the typical distance from the mean. And this variance is just the standard deviation squared. So it's your typical squared distance from the mean. So in order to figure out the variation, or the, I'm sorry, why am I missing variation? Variance, this is a formula on your formula sheet, which really doesn't matter this year. It hasn't yet. You take the sum of each individual outcome minus the expected value or the mean, so you'll have to calculate that squared, times the probability, times the weight. So that's going to give you the variance. You sum all those up, and then when you take the square root of the variance, that will give you the standard deviation of the random variable. Okay, so there's the formula for it. It's the typical distance of the values away from their mean in the distribution. All right, let me close that, and carry on. So in order to figure out the standard deviation, you need to calculate the mean first. Here, the mean was 8.128. So you can see they're taking each value minus that mean, squaring the value and multiplying it by the probability or the weight. Summing all these up, that gives you the squared deviation from the mean. Take the square root of that, that's going to give you, I'm sorry, that gives you the variance of the mean, the variance of the data. Take the square root to get the standard deviation. So you can see an interpretation here. A randomly selected baby's APGAR score will typically differ from the mean by about 1.4 units. Pretty similar to what we've done in the past. Uh, it's worth pointing out, let me go back to the previous one, when you're interpreting the mean it's over the long run so this idea of law of large numbers this is the average apgar score of many many randomly chosen babies not just one just over the long run if we sample many many babies and take the average of their apgar scores all right this goes through how you can do this on your calculator which is very nice and helpful especially if it's a uh, multiple choice question you don't need to show any work if it's a short answer question I would encourage you to do it in your calculator, and then you have to support that with the work. So here they're plugging in the values into list one, they're plugging in the corresponding probabilities into list two, and then they're running one variable statistics on list one and list two to figure out the mean and the standard deviation. So you can see here one variable stats, list one, list two. So the mean, that's your expected value, and here's your standard deviation. So that's a skill you want to make sure you know how to do in the calculator. Okay, going through this, check your understanding. Why don't you pause the video and work through this now? So I'm not going to sit here and calculate this for you. I would plug the number of cars sold into list one. I'd plug the probability into list two. Run one variable statistics, list one, comma, list two. Or list one, and then list two is the frequency. And calculate this. X bar, that's going to be my expected value and sigma sub x is going to be my standard deviation but this is not a multiple choice so you'd have to support your work or support your answers with work which you'll see here or not <laughs> okay i thought they'd show some work basically zero times 0 0.3 plus one times 0.4 etc etc that's going to get you the 1.1 interpretation if many, many Fridays are selected at random, this is the average number of cars sold. And then for the standard deviation, it's going to be each value, in this case 0 minus 1.1 squared times 0.3, plus 1 minus 1.1 squared times 0.4, and 
and so on and so forth, sum all that up, and then take the square root, and that's where they're getting that 0 0.943 from, which represents the standard deviation. Moving on. Ah, continuous random variables. So continuous random variables are like time, temperature. Um, if you want to pick a number between 0 and 1, it could be anything. There's an infinite amount of numbers between 0 and 1. So time, temperature, um, somebody's height is really continuous because it could be anything. So the way we model a continuous random variable is with a density curve. And if you remember from earlier in the course, a density curve, uh, the area underneath it is equal to 1, and it's always above the x-axis. So a couple things to keep in mind there. And we can find the specific areas just using what we know about rectangles and their bases and heights to figure out area. So continuous random variable takes on all values in an interval. So if we want to know what the probability of the temperature is between 50 and 60, it could be any number between those. There's no gaps. We're not just looking at 50 degrees, 51 degrees, 52 degrees. So we use that density curve and look at that to help us calculate our probabilities. So if you'll remember, we did our most famous curve, density curve is the normal distribution. We use that quite a bit. In this scenario, the heights of young women follow a closely normally distributed distribution with mean 64, standard deviation 2.7. So this is a continuous random variable. They want to know what's the probability a randomly chosen young woman has a height between 60 and 70. We're just talking about one person. So we're going to do what we did before, calculate a z-score for each, and then use normal CDF. We're not going to use this shortcut here. It would be normal CDF lower bound 1.48 to upper bound with comma 0, comma 1 for the mean and standard deviation. Ah, this is worth mentioning. Remember, just doing calculator notation is not going to earn you full credit on your AP exam. So remember, there's three things I expect. Sketch with labels, work, and then your answer with some kind of sentence or justification, just like we did in Unit 2. So summary here. We talked about random variables. They're going to have probability distributions. For discrete random variable, it's just going to be that table. If it's a continuous random variable, it's going to be modeled with a density curve. Make sure you can discern the difference between the two. Discrete has gaps between the outcomes. Uh, how many birds are on the tree? How many leaves are on the tree? Continuous random variable is, like I said, anything with time, temperature. Those are probably the, the best examples I can give you for continuous random variables. For discrete random variable, you're going to have to be able to calculate the mean or the expected value and the standard deviation. And there's formulas showing you how to do both here. You need to be able to do that. And for a continuous random variable, let's finish up the summary. Nope, that is the end of the summary. For a continuous random variable, you're going to have to use a normal distribution, calculating z-scores and using normal CDF to find the area under the curve, where they could give you the area under the curve, and you use inverse norm to then find the z-score to solve for whatever they're asking. So I'm excited for this next unit. I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. Have a good day.